Krista Dulu from Ashmore Residential in Hampstead and author of the Hampstead Property Blog. The change in attitudes for a generation of Britons towards home ownership no longer equates to success. Around 75% of workers are prepared to relocate cities to find work, whilst 25% of 16 to 34 year olds aim to have 12 jobs in their career. Owning a home makes these life goals considerably less achievable. This has led to a huge growth in the private rented sector over recent years and is now an industry worth nearly £1.3 trillion. Bricks and mortar still have the allure for those with little faith in stocks and shares. And in this episode, I'll be talking about what would-be investors need to know about buy to let. Rule number one, learn about the pros and cons. The Bank of England slashed its interest rates to a record low of 0.25%, further to the result of the EU referendum last June. Interest rates are now at a historic low, and as a knock-on effect, the financial markets are awash with lots of attractive mortgage offers. Nowadays, renting has become the norm for many, and rents generally rising with inflation has made the prospect of buy-to-let still very attractive. Now, it's always useful to speak to people you know who have invested in buy-to-let property and make sure you get the full story, warts and all. The more research that you do, the more informed a decision you shall make. Number two, choose an area. Now, most investors generally like to buy locally. In fact, around 50 to 60% of people do this, largely because it's what they're familiar with and secondly, because it makes practical sense for those who self-manage. Though there are some important questions you need to ask yourself. Firstly, what's the appeal of your local area? Are the transport links very strong? Are there any highly regarded schools locally? There's also an emerging trend now for investors purchasing in areas that have undergone regeneration. Now, prices in these locations are generally more affordable, and that always, of course, helps the numbers to stack up. Number three, do the maths. What you need to do is get solid evidence about what are realistic and achievable rents in the area and for the type of property that you're thinking about investing in. The cost of finance also has a bearing on your decision and you've also got to factor in the void periods which in the current market are around 28 to 36 days and make sure that you've got sufficient funds as well for maintenance of the property and that you can also absorb the cost of any void periods that may arise at certain times of the year. Number four, go out and get yourself the best deal. As I said earlier, the cost of finance is absolutely crucial in the decision-making process. Now, there are a vast range of products out there in the mortgage market, but my advice is speak to an independent broker and take your time to get as much information as possible and make sure you get the best available options at the time. It's worth remembering that everyone's situation is slightly different, so therefore the crux of this is to make sure that you can get your requirements to match that of the criteria of the lender that you may choose to go with. Now in the current market, it's probably wise to go for a fixed term deal that will help you to consolidate your finances, certainly for the first three to five years, until such time that the investment starts to mature, and also to provide a buffer against any future rate rises, as they will happen. A good broker will also have access to certain mortgage products that you might not necessarily be offered as a retail customer who just walks into one of the high street banks. Rule number five, know your customer. Your tenant is your customer. Ensure that it's right for the needs of the occupants. For example, if you're looking at buying a family house, keep it simple and unfurnished, as the tenants here are likely to have a lot of their own furniture which they're gonna to wanna to bring with them. If you're renting for the student market, then keep your fittings durable but not luxurious, or if it's professionals that you're looking to rent to, Make sure the property is clean, bright and functional and that the kitchens and bathrooms have got all the mod cons. Six, yield. Yield is the yardstick. Now fundamentally, you should be investing for income. In most cases, buy-to-let mortgages are offered on an interest-only basis. Where your income provides a good surplus, all the expenses that you'll incur over a year, like professional fees, maintenance, ground rent and service charges, could be used to meet all these costs. Now as rents rise and the investment matures, the income surplus can be built up over time to either pay down the mortgage or used as a vehicle for investment elsewhere. If you decide on disposing of the asset in the future, the capital gain should pay off the mortgage and still leave you with a respectable lump sum. Now on average in today's market, property prices are doubling once every 12 years or so. Number seven, look elsewhere and create value. 
As I mentioned earlier, a lot of investors like to buy locally because of familiar familiarity and what they feel that they can manage. So be open-minded when it comes to buy to let. If your local town isn't necessarily the best place to invest, then look further afield. Other locations, for example, that have a university or commuter towns, can offer lucrative opportunities for both the student's market and for young professionals who often share to get round affordability issues. Creating value is the key to investing in property, so the decision to buy an unloved three or four bedroom house that needs a bit of cheering up could well be a wise one. Apart from location, condition is the one main factor that has a bearing on value. Now that is an opportunity to negotiate hard on price, especially if you've got nothing to sell. Last but not least, look after your tenant, because your tenant is your customer. It's important that you can ensure that you give your tenant a high level of service throughout their tenure in your property. Keeping the place in good condition and being prompt with repairs is also going to help to keep your occupancy rates as high as possible, which is really the goal of all landlords to keep your tenant in your property for as long as is possible. A good tenant should appreciate the value of the service you offer and is less likely to leave and also will help you to avoid the void, which is the bane of all landlords. In some cases, good relations with your tenants could even result in recommendations and referrals with some tenants even introducing their friends and associates to your property should they decide to leave. If you've got any friends or relatives or associates who are looking to to invest in property, then please share this video with them. And thanks for watching.